Hello everybody, I'm Blue Anxiety. If you like what you're hearing, please like the video, subscribe to the channel, and leave a comment on what I could improve on uh, or what you liked or didn't like about the story on YouTube. I am also on X Twitch, and I'll be coming out with a podcast with the same audio that I put up on YouTube. So if you don't have YouTube Red like me and you don't want to keep your phone open, you can listen to me wherever you get your podcast soon. Eventually, um, probably within 24 hours after this video is posted. Uh, what else do I got? Um, yeah, starting with this video, um, my last video is not going to be in the podcast area. So, um, if you want to hear my first story, you're going to have, you're going to have to go to YouTube. So sorry. <laughs> sorry for the inconvenience, people. Um, I mostly give my updates on X slash Twitter, whatever they're calling it nowadays. Um, so be sure to subscribe there as well to get updates on what's going on regarding, 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 um, all the platforms of YouTube, Twitch, and podcasting. Uh, YouTube is sort of the blend of my scary story, well, not my scary story, scary stories I read. And, um, my gaming and then obviously my gaming is strictly on Twitch and then the wherever you get your podcast is strictly where you can hear scary stories that I read from others so um, also if you have scary stories of your own that you would like to write and turn in you can email me at um, blueanxiety3 at yahoo.com um, let's see so yeah, I'm taking scary stories from Reddit's No Sleep and Scary Story Forums, so let's get started. Um, this is going to be one story only, uh, one one grabs all, I guess, and I'm getting it from r slash no sleep. The author is googly eyes 93 and the name of the article or the story is we found an abandoned puppet workshop think I'm gonna burn it down over my years exploring abandoned and not so abandoned places I've encountered my share of wild situations finding drug dens in old bank vaults a raving hermit in an old Chuck E. Cheese and a lot of still water will make you pretty resistant to weird shit Hell, some friends and I even explored an old asylum from the 40s. Might have been the safest place we've ever visited. So when my buddy Caleb asked if I wanted to try getting into an old office building, I thought it wouldn't be a big deal. The place was 10 stories with two wings that split off from the central entrance. For obvious reasons, I'm not disclosing where it is, but it was abandoned after a lot of the businesses either shut down during COVID or just went to work from home only. Since then, the real estate company has been trying to rent it out to anything, even conventions, but this place apparently has some weird vibes that keep most people away. Caleb's always been more on the idiot side, yeah I'll say idiot side to put it bluntly. He's not very bright, especially when it comes to his own adrenaline. Really just the perfect combination of reckless and stupid. Normally, I would try to avoid going to too many places with him, but this being a relatively newer building made me think it was going to be safer. Built in 95 and shut down in 2020, couldn't be that dangerous, right? We went in at night, under cover of darkness, so we didn't get caught. The front door only had a simple padlock on it, but Caleb was able to pick it up pretty easily. It only took a couple of minutes to slip right by and into the building. The lights were on, I'm assuming because of a timer. That wasn't too surprising. There wasn't any signal of security guard though, with next to no other kinds of deterrence for those like us. Inside, the main lobby looks like it hasn't been updated since the place was built. It looked like it was going for 90 chic with the square pattern carpet and relief lighting that made everything stupidly dim. So where first? I asked him, stopping in the lobby center. A small desk was at the side of the door we entered through. 
covered in a decent layer of dust. Two elevators sat on the wall opposite of the doors, while the wings of the building split off diagonally from there. Long hallways with only minimal lighting. Might need our flashlights after all. Start from the top and work our way down, he replied. Walking over to a sign by the elevator doors, business names were still displayed with the floor numbers and rooms beside them, though there weren't that many there in the first place. The elevator doors showed as follows. Basement 1, Electrical. Basement 2, Storage. Floor 1, Amazon Support. Floor 2, Blank. Floor 3, Smith Brothers Security. Floor 4, Malsons. Floor 5, Space for Rent. Floor 6, Better Tech Solutions. Floor 7, Available. Floor 8, Available. Floor 9, Price Right Travel. Floor 10, The Joy Factory. Dream Factory sounds like a good place to begin, I guess. Wonder if the elevators work, I said, stepping forward and pressing the up button. It lit up with a ding, light inside flickering with the effort. It only took a couple of minutes for the humming to stop along with the elevators in front of us. Both doors slid open at the same time, revealing both had lights out. Cool. Good start, I said. We took the one on the left, hitting the button for floor 10 as we huddled in. I brought out my flashlight to get a glimpse around, trying to see what shape this thing was in, or if I should worry about dying in it. Wood panels on the side were sliding off, leaving gaps in the elevator where you could see the mechanisms as it rose. The humming sound from in here was more of a grinding, steel working hard against gears that had obviously been neglected for even longer than the building has been shut down. Even the stuffiness of the elevator wasn't enough to stop the chill I got on the way up. Looking around, shining my light on one of the cracks in the side, the steel beams holding up the elevator weren't the only thing passing by. For a brief moment, a face went past, right in front of the crack in the wall. Pale, white face with open mouth, eyes staring in, wide-eyed, blank wonder shone through as we ascended. I dropped my flashlight while screaming profanities, making Caleb look at me strangely. Holy shit, did you see that? I asked him, but he only shook his head. There was a fucking face in the elevator shaft, dude. Probably some prank, a mannequin or something shoved in between the beams. He shrugged it off, paying no mind as my heart was still beating out of my chest. Moments passed that seemed like days while I tried to control my breathing, desperately telling myself that it really was a prank. Ding! Oh, Jesus, fuck! He shouted as soon as the doors opened, a huge, fuzzy monster staring us down from right across the 10th floor lobby. Dark, hollow eyes looked sunken in against the face, a snout protruding with a bright blue nose painted in front of whiskers. Caleb began to immediately press the button to close the door, but the elevator wasn't responding. This idiot started to punch the damn button panel repeatedly, breaking it in. The beast across from us just stared back, a wide smile visible against dark purple fuzz. Dude. I think that's a puppet, I said, my eyes adjusting better to the dim light. Walking forward, I reached a hand out to touch the thing, feeling hard plastic underneath the soft fuzz. Definitely creepy, but not going to kill us. He stumbled out of the elevator, giving the costume a solid punch in return for the scare. The puppet took another win, though, Caleb exclaiming in pain before grabbing his hand. Hell with this place, he swore again, wringing his hand in the air. It was your idea, man. This dude was just minding his own business until we came along, I said, turning to look down the hallway in both directions. Similar costumes were lining the halls on both sides, all with different defining features and colors. Most toward the front looked like hybrid suit puppets. Kind of like Big Bird on Sesame Street. One person would probably be in the suit, while others controlled the features. Others were less stylized, resembling more human-like marionettes. Oh my god, this looks like a furry workshop. Please don't tell me we found furry hell. 
god, I hope not, he said, pushing the first one over onto the ground, spitting on it. Fuck you, stupid-ass puppet. I'd be lying if I said this place wasn't one of the eeriest I've ever seen in my life. Most of the others actually had eyes, unlike the one when we came in. I felt like they were following me, though, no matter where I turned. The dim hallway made their shadows cross in the path, making a lattice of darkness we were stepping through. This must be a wild amount of money just left to rot. Wonder where they went, I mentioned, shining my light around the low ceilings. Most of the rooms in the hallway were empty. Blank beige walls with no decoration or sign they were ever used. Most of the rooms in the hallway were empty. Blank beige walls with no decoration or sign that they were ever used. Like, people pay good money for these things. We could get a ton, even for one. Maybe they're doing some Five Nights at Freddy shit? Think one might come to life and try to stuff us in? He shot back, grinning. Hey, there's a light down there. You see it? He said. Yeah, right at the end there, I confirmed, a blue light catching my eye through one of the doorways ahead. It was flashing slowly, without any kind of sequence or pattern. As we approached, a shadow moved from behind the door, briefly showing in the light. As soon as it appeared, it was gone. I don't like this place, man. Me either, he shot back. Stairway is right there. Want to take it to the next floor? He asked as we approached the flashing light. I peeked around, trying to get a glimpse into the room as he barged right in. Oh my god, there was a mannequin standing in the corner, an unfinished suit on it. Bright red fur, large claws, and vacant, staring eyes were the main standouts. It looked like it wasn't completely finished, lacking many of the finer details a lot of the others had. The face was mostly blank, with no defining features like the whiskers or colors, just the bright red fur. In the other corner was a screen, a marionette handle dangling from the ceiling above it to hold up new puppets. So, definitely a furry factory, I said, looking around the room for anything else. Some supplies were left on shelves nearby, with the bright blue light coming from a modem that was left plugged in. An alert light was sporadically flashing, making the suit look even more eerie. Something was reflecting from the vacant, unfinished eye holes on the suit. I moved closer, trying to get a good look at it. So I finally lifted my light to the mannequin, shining it right in the eyes. Vacant, lifeless eyes stared back at me from within. No color in them. The smell cut through as I got closer, rotten decay like meat left out in the sun. Fuck! I shouted, dropping my light and stepping back. I ended up moving into the corner, puking out whatever meager dinner I had eaten earlier. Caleb, curious about what got me, lifted the mask from the torso, revealing the body inside. Holy shit, he whispered, looking at the face of the body head on. I stood, wiping my mouth on my sleeve. The smell was permeating further through the room now, giving everything an underlying scent of decay. I'm not sure if it was male or female when it was alive. It was so emaciated to the point of barely having distinguishable features. Hair was thinning out on the head, waxy skin nearly glowing in the flashing lights. Is this real? He asked. Do you smell that? It has to be real, I said, holding a hand over my nose to block it out. That's a fucking body, man. We need to call the cops. Then we'll get in trouble, he said, looking from me to the body. I already have priors. I can't get arrested. So get out, and I'll call them. Jesus, there might be a murderer around here. Think that's a little more important, I said, pulling my phone out. Punching in 911, I lifted it to my ear, with no sound on the other end. I pulled it back down, trying to see what the deal was, but the call just wasn't going through. My battery was blinking red. 5% left. I charged this before we left. What the hell? It died almost instantly then, the call unable to complete. A sudden, raspy breath from behind the privacy curtain startled both of us away. The hell was that? Caleb asked, cautiously moving forward toward the curtain. He reached out a shaking hand, ready to pull it to the side and see what was there. The decaying body is the suit paid no attention to our terror. 
Strings on the marionette handle dangling from the ceiling began to bend and sway as something moved below. Another pained gasp emanated. Caleb tore back the curtain and jumped back like a snake was about to lunge at him. Behind it, we could finally see the terror that was gasping for breath. Another person, this time held up by hooks in their skin, holding them above the ground as a dangling puppet. Their eyes filled with abject horror when the curtain flew back, likely thinking they were in for some sort of torture by whoever put them there. Please, was all the frail puppet could offer before we ran from the room in fear, Caleb screaming as he went. The idiot ran down the hall the way we came, desperately banging on the elevator call button with no avail. As much as he was hitting the button, I'm surprised the panel didn't break. Maybe it did, since the elevator never came. It didn't matter. Before he could turn back to try for the stairs, the massive puppet across from the elevators, the same one that he had punched earlier, stepped off the platform it was on, walking toward him with arms wide. All I could do was run, desperately hoping to get away from whatever hell we had stumbled into. The stair light was behind me, all the way back at the end of the hall. Caleb was screaming from behind me, begging whatever might be controlling the puppet to stop. It was a huge mistake, but I looked back. This puppet, or costume, or whatever the fuck it was, had Caleb held up in the air by his neck. He had held him closer to the ceiling. I could see thin, wispy strands, like a spider web, coming down from the tiles. It looked as if they were just appearing from the surface, falling right through toward Caleb, hooks materializing on the end. Caleb screamed through a crushed throat as the hooks pierced his skin, arms, legs, back, near any area with a joint that could be manipulated. The strings lifted him in the air, holding him high before beginning to move towards me. I was still a few feet away from the stairway, both Caleb's screaming body and the large beast coming my way. It wasn't until the last second that I finally burst through the fire door, desperately making my way down the steep, winding stairs to the emergency exit. I could hear the beast puppet thumping down the stairs behind me, moving with hollow thumps that made the suit sound like an empty shell. My legs and lungs were an inferno of pain, adrenaline barely helping as I ran further. The first door was finally in sight below me as the beast grew nearer. Only one turn behind me now. As I ran down the last flight, I hit the edge of a step and slipped, falling on my ass on the slick concrete. I rolled down the stairs, hearing my wrist crack as it hit the edge of another step, landing face up at the bottom. I could see Caleb lowering from the ceiling, tears of terror in his eyes and a scream trying to choke its way through his crushed larynx. He was coming lower after me, skydiving down through the space between flights of stairs to draw me back up with him to whatever hell was waiting. Shaking the daze from my head, I pulled myself up toward the red emergency door right there. As I finally pushed the handle, letting the magnet loose, an alarm began to blare in the building, shrill and painful in my ears. I didn't look behind me as I ran from the building. My wrist still hurt. I don't know if it's fractured or broken yet, because I've been too terrified to leave my home. When I got out of the office building, I ended up walking home, aching the entire way from my fall down the stairs. Caleb had the car keys when he was taken, and the dumbass only parked a few feet down the street from the office. Fire trucks passed me on the way, probably checking out the alarm I triggered during my escape. I wouldn't be surprised if they run his plates and find out it's his car, but I'm doubtful they're going to find him. I hope he's at least dead already, the merciful option instead of being hung up or stuffed in a costume puppet like the two we found. If I can't get up the nerve, I'm going to call the cops. Maybe they can investigate. Worst case, I set my wrist and grab a can of gasoline so it doesn't happen to anyone else. God. I wish it had just been a furry workshop at this point. That would have been peaceful at least. Caleb is a fucking idiot, but he doesn't deserve that. I hope he's at peace somehow.